hypothesis in favor of the alternative. So I hope that this somehow remind you of these, these two things are known as a one tail test. And this is a two tail test. Two tail test. So I hope this makes some sense to many of you. Going back to talk about uh, to talk about how to you know solve this exercise. So you can see that this is a left tail test. So we are testing. This is our null hypothesis, which is beta is p is equal to zero or actually greater than or equal to zero, and our alternative is beta p lower than zero. So this is obviously a left tail test. If it was a left tail test, this means that we need to find t alpha, right? So if I I just want to recall this, so if I erased all of this here, so if let me you know what let me erase everything. If uh, we say the following, if we say that we have a left tail test, this means this means that we are looking at a t distribution that looks something like that and we are looking at the left tail cells which is minus t alpha so obviously this should be a very negative a negative number and what we want to compute is we want to compute the t test which is equal to beta hat p minus zero because this is uh you know the null hypothesis divided by the standard error of beta p hat the nice thing is that this is already computed for us in tsm so in tsm if you go to tsm you will find that this was already computed and this value turns out to be um, if we go to TSM, it turns out to be, if we look at the p-foot, this turns out to be, this is a t-ratio, so it's going to be minus 3 point, uh, minus 3.259. So it's going to be minus 3.259, minus 3.259. So this is going to be the value. If this value turns out to be in this area, which is lower than this, then what do we say? We reject the null, right? So we we reject the null in favor of the alternative. Remember that here the null is beta p is greater than or equal to zero. Although in the question it says equal, but these things turns out to be it, it, it actually all depend on the alternative, which is beta p is less than or less than not equal, less than only, strictly less than zero. So if it turns out that this t is lower than that critical value, then we say that we reject the null in favor of the alternative okay so what we need to do is now to find this t alpha remember that the t alpha is also dependent on degrees of freedom which is equal to n minus 4 we explained this in a bit so this is uh, 50 uh, it was 45 minus 4 which is equal to 41 so we have to keep this number in mind so let's go and cr check this number what is minus t alpha is equal to so minus t alpha is equal to we have to go there so we go to setup look up critical value and we say it's a student test we are looking at lower tail test and we're looking at 0 0.05 so we find the critical value it turns out to be that this is equal to minus 1.68 uh, one, minus 1.68 so we go back here and we write this is minus 1.68 minus 1.68 now is this value lower than that value or not is this value lower than that yes so because this is minus 3 and this is minus 1.68 so it seems that this is lower and therefore we reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative i hope this makes sense and we have actually finished part b answering part b of the question okay ladies and gentlemen so we are in this question we are asked to find to test the null hypothesis that beta p plus beta q is equal to zero so this implies that if, if the null hypothesis is true, this implies that beta q is equal to minus beta p. So we are given this equation in the question. This is uh, the law of demand equation or the demand equation. And we want to continue saying this, but when we are imposing that beta q is equal to minus beta p. So this becomes beta node plus beta p log pt uh, minus because beta q is minus beta p so minus beta p log q t plus you know beta y uh, log y t and so on plus ut 
So from now on, I'm just going to say that this stays the same. But what I really care about is this guy over here. So if we want to talk about it in more details, this becomes equal to beta node. Plus, if we take beta p common, this becomes log pt minus log q2, which is log of pt over q2, qt, plus beta y log of yt plus ut, which is the error term. So if we set this, this means that we are given the following um, inequality. Uh, this means that this is, if, if the null hypothesis is true, then this is basically, this could be written as so. And therefore, if we want to really test this, if I added another parameter here, which I call it beta q lin or log, basically, log qt, log qt. In this case, this, our null hypothesis would be what? Would be beta q is equal to 0, and the alternative is beta q not equal to 0. So the null hypothesis that I just imposed over here, if we have written it this way and we added this new parameter, it seems that we can test this null hypothesis by testing this null hypothesis, right? So if we want to write this a bit clearer, we would say that if we want to test the null hypothesis beta node, beta p plus beta q is equal to 0, it is as if for, you know, for this equation over here, for this uh, demand equation over here, it is as if as testing the null hypothesis beta q is equal to 0 for this uh, for this uh, equation, which is ln of xt. So I'm going to write it down. So it is as if testing for this equation, which is ln of xt is equal to beta node plus beta uh, p ln of p t over q2, qt, plus uh, plus beta uh, q or you know whatever beta you want to call it you can call it beta r okay beta r qt lin qt plus beta y log here i mean lin or log is the same okay log qt beta y log yt okay log yt plus ut. So if we test for this regression model, what we can say that this is the same as testing for this. But I just want to make sure that you know the variables. This beta node is stays the same, beta node plus beta 2. This thing represent what? So I'm just going to change color. This represent log of p, uh, p real. And this represents uh, log of dpi. And this represents log of q food. So keep this in mind. And let's go back to the question. The question is saying over here is that we need, um, this is data preparation, here it is. So test for homogeneity restriction, which is beta p plus beta q is equal to zero. This can be done in several ways, including. So what he's saying over here is that you have to replace log p, p k t, which is given as so. This is log p, p k t. So we're replacing this thing over here, log p, p t, by log perl. So this is what, you know, uh, this is what the exercise is saying in this equation. And use a t-test to test the significance of log q cat. So we have to test the significance of this beta r, which is this null hypothesis. If we were to able to test this and we find that we fail to reject the null, this means that this is zero, right? So let's do this in, in TSM. So what we're going to do is we're going to run another regression. So we run a linear regression. And this time, the, the dependent variable is still log food. 
the uh, dependent variable is we're gonna remove log p food and we're gonna put log p r right this what the uh, this is what the question is saying right so log p r and we're gonna press go and we are gonna look at log q food okay so we it seems obvious that we reject the null hypothesis and this means that this means that the null hypothesis beta p q is equal to zero is not true is not accepted we are going to reject and therefore we are going to reject the null hypothesis beta p plus beta q in this equation is equal to zero i hope this helps answer uh, the first part of this equation of this uh, of okay the other part of the question is asking us of um, to use wild test now I just want to remind you guys that while test is the same as um, or very similar to the way we do the Lagrangian so the while test is, is somehow fairly simple on how to apply it in, um, in TSM so if you go to TSM and we want to find the following right we want to test if if P uh, beta p plus beta q is equal to zero but remember again that here we have to go back when we construct our uh, regression model to remember that this dependent va variable is log uh, food and that indep uh, the independent uh, so the dependent variable and the independent variables are this but we have to be careful that we have to change this log per or uh, p real back to uh, talk about log q food uh, log p food which is this one okay and then we hit go so this was the main uh, thing now the other thing we want to do is we need to type the following parameters in the model parameter constraint so if we go to model uh, and uh, sorry if we open model parameter constraints this one and we have to put coded restrictions okay which we're gonna be selecting here as as it says and then we wanna go to world and then we have to enter the code and here we have to enter the code the code should be written as following but before going into these details we have to know what for what values are we talking about beta p and beta q beta p represent that beta over here beta p and beta q so beta p represent the thing that is multiplying by p food while q uh, beta q is represent what is multiplied by the uh, by the price index of the other uh, goods other than the good okay so if we look at uh, what we have been talking so far okay we can see that the q represent the uh, uh, the q represent the q uh, of other goods and the q of other good was computed as q cat or q food okay and we're gonna first of all we need to find the values if we write equation we can see that which one represent the p food so i equal to three this is q food we should be careful that we are talking about two and three not one okay so we wa we have to write a2 is equal to minus a3 this is our uh, test that we need to do so if we go back to model uh, parameter constraint we're gonna put the wall test we have to enter the code and we write a2 is equal to minus a3 and then we press ok and 